Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump is Speaker of the House. That's not hyperbole. He's not obviously Speaker of the House in terms of his role or title, but he's Speaker of the House in terms of 14,000 hours that McCarthy and Matt Gates are going to release of security footage, secret and hidden security footage the Justice Department did not want disclosed. So you have videotaped surveillance footage of that terrible, terrible day two years ago that they didn't want revealed. Okay, that directly serves the interests of Trump because it exonerates him or it will exonerate him in the court of public opinion. Democrats sensationalized a tragedy there were things of course, that they shouldn't have taken place. So yes, but he was protected under the First Amendment and I condemn that day, but I also condemn a whole summer full of property damage, a billion dollars worth, and I support why people peacefully demonstrated, but I don't support 19 lives lost, 14,000 arrests, curfews, in every major city. This is all according to Wikipedia that summer. Again, a double standard. You had a CNN journalist in front of a building set ablaze. And he said, fiery but mostly peaceful. It became a meme. That's not just, that's not the only story. We have Jim Jordan now, who is launching a criminal investigation because the classified documents scandal is a criminal probe. You are not supposed to lose classified data. Trump did not lose classified data. He had the right to take personal items with him, just like Bill Clinton had that right. Okay? And so a judge ruled that Bill, former president, could have classified data in a sock drawer next to his um, underwear. You can look it up. It was deemed personal. Trump had personal records. He was president with the power to declassify. You knew exactly where and how he obtained the classified documents be or the formerly classified documents because he was president. He knew exactly where they were at all times and he declassified the documents verbally. According to Politico, he had the right to do so. And according to the United States Constitution, he had every right as commander-in-chief to classify and declassify anything at will. Madam Secretary, who is almost certainly a part of all of this nightmare for Biden, did not have that right with servers siphoning top secret intel outside the U.S. onto computer servers. Outside, I mean, you couldn't, it's, it is the most absurd thing that took place. A government official with computer servers finding a way to transfer top secret intel outside of the United States government. Okay, Comey, you can watch the short on this channel. The Honorable James Comey said, no reasonable prosecutor would indict. Yeah, well, laws were broken. That's his, those are his words. With Biden, he did not have the right to declassify anything. Furthermore, to Hillary's defense, which I don't do often, one of her defenses was, well, President Obama knew. Apparently, nobody knew that Biden had classified data floating around in a, in a garage next to his Corvette. Hey, man, come on, man, what's some uh, ice cream, man? So... That is a crime to remove the classified data and put it outside of secure locations is a crime. That's why it was a criminal act with those servers. And that's why it's a crime that, um, that Biden possibly commit, likely committed. And Jim Jordan has begun the investigation. Jim Jordan launched his first investigation as judiciary chair into Biden's classified document scandal. That's the, I'm reading from the House Judiciary Committee. Okay. Trump was a former president. There is no precedent of a former president um, indicted for removing classified documents. 
there is a precedent for people below the presidency indicted or charged with mishandling of classified data and you don't need intent okay so that the honorable james comey added that but anyway hit subscribe to this channel every day ladies and gentlemen if you enjoy my work i know i know i have i'm so blessed and by the way god bless you left right center communist socialist republican trump supporter trump republican i'm voting for trump i support donald trump because he's a fantastic president. Did he say things here and there that he shouldn't have said? Sure, yes. But was he an amazing president in terms of the economy and foreign policy? Objectively, there's no rebuttal to that. You can look at what's taking place with the economy and foreign policy. It's a categorical catastrophe. But anyway, God bless you. Left, right, center, it doesn't matter. Have a beautiful, wonderful, happy 2023, a joyful, prosperous year, and I wish you only the best, and thank you for watching this channel. I want to give some positive vibes, because it ain't going to be, it ain't going to be good for uh, the Democratic Party in terms of politics this year, and <laughs> there'll be a lot to critique and talk about, but I want you to know if you're on the left and you're watching, only positive vibes, love, and happiness for everyone, left, right, center, doesn't matter. Every day at 8 a.m., Please be here. 8 a.m. It is actually the most important thing. I should have started this years ago. We are almost at 204,000 subscribers. But you know, the important thing, ladies and gentlemen, one thing the algorithm and, you know, YouTube really likes is a an audience that knows specific times to tune in. This way, if you, get, if you don't get the notification, you can still always tune in. 8 a.m. forever on this channel. And 11 a.m. forever on H.A. Goodman of almost, well, 203,000 right now. 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., set your clock. And be here for breakfast in the morning. Just be here. H.A. Goodman's other channel, 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. And also go to hagoodman.com to read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, and other publications. All my writing was given a stamp of approval by editors. I'm going to always bring that up also and um, become part of a newsletter to my super thanks. Super thanks is below and to my, to my Patreon, to my new Patreons. Thank you so very, very much. Okay, Trump did not commit a crime. We know this because the Federal Bureau of Investigation took boxes at Mar-a-Lago and he was accused of having committed a crime but they couldn't prove that he committed a crime because he's a former president with the power to declassify. He was accused of being a Kremlin operative. Then they found out it was a complete hoax and an absurd myth. Um, not one vote was altered from Facebook ads. And furthermore, he didn't. they investigated him under the false premise, the guise, the pretext of, well, he could have done something bad. Okay? We know Biden did lose those documents. Trump did not lose documents. As a former president, you could say, well, he had no right. No one's above the law. Yeah, you know who is? Madam Secretary. So is Bill also. But anyway, there are Democrats above the law. A couple of Republicans too. Bush is, was, a, George W. was above the law apparently. But you have a situation, ladies and gentlemen, where they investigated Trump, whether it's New York, Georgia, whether it's the Department of Justice, they investigated Trump on what he possibly could have done. Okay? Always is what the same thing now with the accusation is what he could have done, what he should what, what he they don't have evidence, but a lot of people have said and accused him of things. Okay? We know Biden lost the classified data. This is a fact. We know Hillary had servers. This is a fact. We don't know if the National Archives and the Federal Bureau of Investigation and others had the right to go into Mar-a-Lago. They didn't. The absurd rebuttal as well, you know, there was a subpoena for the documents. It's like, well, um, he was already negotiating with the, with the National Archives. He had every right to negotiate. And the National Archives is a library. And there is no enforcement mechanism within the Presidential Records Act. So they had no right to call any government agency to, to force a, a president. That's never happened before. 
So he didn't actually commit any crime, whether it's being accused of pressuring people, whether he uh, pressured, they impeached him twice, but he, they, he wasn't indicted on any of those things. You can indict, <clears throat> you can indict Joe and Hunter on obvious graft schemes, and you can indict them also on, oh no, sorry, Joe Biden on losing the classified documents and also potentially having more classified documents throughout the, you know, in, in, in more um, offices or whatever. The interesting thing is, and I talked about this in the segment prior to this one, um, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are almost certainly a part of this. They don't, they don't, they, they want to pave the way for Hillary 2024 and good for them. Okay. I think that when people don't realize the treachery and how sinister all of this is, it comes as a, uh, shock and surprise and it's a negative thing. I think if you realize how despicable and nasty uh, people within the Democratic Party can be, what they did to Bernie Sanders is probably nothing compared to what their um what 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 that machine, that Democratic Party machine is going to level against a president that they want uh, not to run again in 24. They want him to just, um, you know, become a private citizen and, you know, what, and just be a former president. And they want Hillary Clinton to be the 24 nominee. Uh, it is, you'd, you'd have to be very naive and gullible to believe that all of this is just coincidence. And within three days, uh, classified data is found next to his Corvette and also in his office. He didn't know about it. And, um, uh, oh, by the way, there's a special counsel now, Merrick Garland. Okay, Th this is a politi These are political stunts. You really don't need a special counsel, actually, to really investigate uh, Biden. You don't. He he committed a crime. You can have Jim Jordan investigate. You have Republicans investigate. Okay, um, the special counsel is going to be very politically damaging. It could be. Uh, there could be legal repercuss repercussions, indictments eventually because of what they uncover. He's also a Trump appointee. But the issue, the big issue is that Biden is not admired by most of the country. What he's, the economy stinks. It's going to get worse. We're going into a recession and foreign policy is a catastrophe. And we're ba basically hanging by a thread in terms of the economy. The original sin was shutting down economic activity. And of course, who pushed for that? Bureaucrats experts, the morally superior, highly educated liberal Democrats. They will turn on a dime and they went after Trump with classified data. Now they're just, you know, now they're defending Biden for the same thing. Worse, actually, because he's not a president. But Trump is, getting back to Trump being Speaker of the House, Trump is, Trump is the Speaker of the House and the next, de facto, and this entire, the next two years will be Trump leveling investigations or investigations being leveled that help his 24 campaign. That, whether you want to say he's doing, he's actually telling Republicans or whether he's in contact with Republicans or influencing them or whether these Republicans want to on their own, it just helps Trump 24. It pretty much obliterates any chance that Biden becomes the 24 nominee, and it paves the way for Hillary Clinton as the 24 nominee. Now, I don't see Gavin Newsom or anyone else or Buttigieg or anyone else as nominee. I don't take it to the bank. Don't take, because I've been wrong on this before, but I've been right on a lot of things. But that's the way Democrats roll. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. Thank you so much. Be here at 11 a.m.